morning, good morning. I am so excited. It's it's early. <laughs> it's early. And my girl has joined me. So I am really excited for us to jump into today's conversation. But you know what I'm going to tell you before we get started, make sure you pause, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. So you're always notified when I upload a new video and then grab your caffeine and grab your word and let's get started. Okay, so I'm really excited. Today, I have Drene Cobb with me. She has been such a blessing, and I know that she's going to be a blessing to you all. So I'm going to give her an opportunity to introduce herself, and then we're going to talk about some coffee. So Drene, say hi to the girls. Hi, ladies. How are you? Well, I am Drene Cobb. I am the owner of Renew Skin Bar here in the beautiful Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> I am a minister of the gospel as well. And I am just so excited to be on this morning. Hey, pretty. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. I'm so excited. Thank She's you also for um, having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I am also an author. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. prayer. Yeah, that's it. Developing exactly. a lifestyle of devotion. That's it. Exactly. We're going to give you all the applause. So now that you know who my guest is, I want to talk to you a little bit about what the coffee is for today. So, like I said, it's early. Uh, we're meeting up before our day starts, before the kids get up. And so, of course, I have my favorite, which is Joe Knows Coffee. And this is the Joe's um, Donut Store Blend. It's the medium roast. It's my favorite everyday coffee. You guys already know this. Um, and so I thought that it would be good to bring it out. I hadn't showed it to you guys in a while. So if you're looking for a new coffee, this is a really good one. I get mine from TJ Maxx or Marshall. You can also order it online at Amazon. And then the next thing is the creamer. I have the sweet and creamy from Chobani and this one's plant-based. So it's vegan friendly. There's no dairy, no lactose, no artificial flavors, no sweeteners, no gluten, no trans fat, no nada, but all the good <laughs> stuff. It's really, really good. And we actually haven't talked about this one before. I've done the sweet cream, but this one is actually called sweet and creamy. So it's actually different. Sweet cream is in a purple bottle. This is obviously in a white. So if you guys are looking for something that's plant-based and friendly for your gut, that's the one. Okay. Now that we've talked about some pretty good coffee, I want to talk about some pretty good word. And the scripture that I sent Drene is Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. And you guys know how we do it. I'm going to read my version, and then she's going to read hers, and we're going to chat about it. And actually today, I'm going to be doing New King James Version, which I don't think I have done in a while, but I really, really loved the way that this was written. And so I want to read it for you all right now, okay? It says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. I love this. All right, Janelle, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to read yours. Which version are you reading? Great. So I am reading from the NIV version and it reads, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Oh, I love mm. that. I, I love the word. It's that for me. <laughs> it's that for I me. Love the word. <laughs> it's that for me. I, I, um, this entire month, you guys, we've been talking about serving and how it's a part of our, our, our service to God, right? To serve others and to love others and to value others and to esteem others. And so I really thought it would be really good to chat with Janae about that, what it means to have and live a life of actual service through relationship and what that looks like. Um, but I wanted to kind of chat about as she read the scripture with the Holy Spirit downloaded to her and we're just going to chat for a little bit. So today I'm going to let you open up. When you first read this scripture, what was something that stood out to you? Um, what did the Holy Spirit start talking to you about? So when I first read this scripture, um, I thought about the heart. Mm. The heart came mm -hmm. to me because it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit out of. Okay. And so, right. 
So we live from our heart, right? That's yes. the place that we live from. Um, uh, um, according to Proverbs 4 and 23, it says um, that we should guard our heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. So this is the place where we live from. Yes. And so um, as I begin to think about the, just the word servant leadership, yeah. I begin to think is not really a position, but it's the posture of the heart. That's it. It's the posture of the heart. So thinking about selfish ambition, and so um, I wrote down some um, definitions, selfish okay. ambition. It says as a mo um, motivation to elevate oneself or to put one's own interests before another. Mm -hmm. So it is a self above others approach. And, that's and, we, right, and we know that that is not the heart of a servant leader. Mm -hmm. And so the um, scripture says, um, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, valuing others above yourself. So it's all about valuing others, bringing value to others. I love that. I think what's, what I really love is when you, when you pointed out like this is servant leadership, right? And we're always supposed to emulate Christ. And he was a servant right. leader. Right. He, he wasn't looking for a title. He wasn't looking right. for applause or accolades or anything like that. He came to serve us with his life, which is huge because then he led us into salvation. Right. So it's right. like when we think about, can I be on the front stage? Is my name going to be remembered? Are the lights high enough for me? And right. is the title big enough for me? You have missed the mark. Come on. You have absolutely missed the mark. And you talked about it so beautifully. You said it's the posture of your heart. Right. Right. It's, it's that. Right. So where right. is it? Yeah. Where's your heart check? What's your heart check? Right, right, right. And so we see the life of Jesus. Jesus came not for himself, <laughs> nope. but come on. But he came as a ransom for us. And so we also see in um, John 13, one oh. through five. When Jesus was washing the disciples' feet, feet, he led from the bottom. And so servant leadership is all about leading from the bottom. He led from the bottom, leading by example. And I always um, love this um, quote that says, if we're not faithful over the mop, then we're not ready for the mic. Uh, if we're not faithful, over the mop, then we're not ready for the mic. And so I'm sure um, Jesus, the disciples was like, wait a minute, Jesus, what are you doing? Right. Even, even Peter said, wait a minute, you're going to wash my feet? Like, what's up? Like, no, right. <laughs> like, no, that is not your job. But Jesus was teaching them servant leadership. That the one who served is the one that is the greatest. I think that's it. Right. And so we must um, lead from the bottom up. And oh. it's not all about the um, title. We see even in that text, um, John 13, Jesus took the towel. So we have to become people that will take the towel instead of the title, because it is the towel that gets you to the title. That gets you. The, yeah. Okay. Come on. It is mm -hmm. the towel that gets you to the title. So yeah. um, also in that scripture, it says that Jesus took off his outer garment. Mm -hmm. And so there are some things that we have to take off in order to serve others. Yeah. So, yeah, I love it. I, Y'all, this is what happens every time that we're in our appointments, by the way, this is my personal esthetician <laughs> and this is what she does all the time. So you see me just sitting, just eating, right? Like this is, this is a thing, but it, it's, it's true. There's so much to unpack there, but it's not right. just this one scripture in the word. And I think that's one of the things that Janae is driving home. This is woven throughout the word. 
And it's about servant leadership and as she calls it, leading from the bottom or leading from the back and understanding that it's not about your title. It's not about who knows you. It's about have you served well and have you served with a posture of heart that I just want you to be well. I want your interests to be met. I want you to be elevated. I want you to be loved on. I want you to see the love and glory of Christ, right? And I think sometimes we miss that. We we miss it because we know that God has given us anointing. We know that God has given us visions and dreams and we know that he's given us talents and gifts. And so we automatically think about, oh yes, I'm going to be up here. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) And God is like, that is, so, and and something when you were talking that the Holy Spirit like kind of ticked, you know, was tapping me on, he was like, you know, people think about that as being, the position to attain right but that is actually just a result of your actual position at here come on right this is a result this is a result this is the position that's so good oh that's so good because you just tell them like oh wait 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 because i mean if you cannot manage or steward the mop then you cannot have the mic if you cannot be found holding the towel then you will not have the title which means that this part is the result And so you have to perfect this. And again, this is throughout the word and it's about stewardship. Are you stewarding your gifts and talents the way that he wants you to and honoring Mm. those around you so that you are putting them into the knowledge and the awareness of God and not the knowledge and awareness of you. Right, 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 right. Because it's all about bringing him glory. That's it. It is all about bringing him glory. So how can I um, put myself in a position to value others? How can I serve you, Petra? (laughs) Right. How can I serve you? And that is what it's about. It is about valuing others above ourselves. Um, And we even look in the scripture and see where um, Jesus, like, Jesus valued others. Mm-hmm. Wherever Jesus went, it was about others. Others. It was about bringing healing to others. It was about bringing deliverance to others. And so even when Jesus taught the disciples, mm-hmm. he was teaching them, preparing them, to be servant leaders to the world. He said, now you go out into all of the world and value others, make disciples of man. This is not about you. This is not your show, but it is so that God can get the glory so that his kingdom can be advanced and not our own kingdom. And so I believe that when we posture our hearts in that place, Lord, not my will, but your will. Mm -hmm. How can I serve you today? Oh, I love that. How can I serve you today? And it may not always look like us getting all the glory because it's not about us. Um, um, The father sent Jesus so that he can get the glory. And so sometimes we want the glory, (laughs) but it's not about us getting the glory. It's about he himself that came um, to die for us as a ransom to get the glory. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so also just to think about the time that we're in, like, (laughs) yeah, 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 yeah. We must check our motives. We must check our motives to see because God told Abraham, I will make your name great. Yeah. And so I believe that God will make our name great, but it, but it is so that he can get the glory. And so as we're building ministry, as we're building our platform, make sure Christ is the center, make sure we're doing it to heal, to save, to deliver make sure these these are the reasons why we're building and not just building so that we can be known so that yeah no 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 so it's definitely um a heart check definitely a heart check when it comes to servant leadership 
It's a huge heart check. And and, yeah. and saying that when you were talking about how he was teaching the disciples to be servant leaders, everything that he was doing was for others. The yeah. one time that he asked about himself, he followed it up with, but God, not my will, but yours. Come on. That's and it so is good. God's will that we be servant leaders. It is God's will that we are giving. It is God's will that we follow without stopping. It is God's will that we esteem others above ourselves. It is God's yeah. will that we effectuate his glory of the earth. It is right. God's will that we find our value in him and not ourselves. Right. Right, 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 right. One time, the one time in the word where he stopped in the garden of Gethsemane and he says, listen, God, if you're feeling good, if you'll take this cup, <laughs> come on down for that. However, <laughs> right. You know what I but mean? But nevertheless, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and that's, but that, I think that is one of the greatest examples because yes, through his life, he was showing, you know, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to show you how to be a servant leader. I'm going to show you how to serve. Yes. But in that moment, this is literally him not putting his own ambitions or his own value above anybody else. He's asking God, he said, now, if, if you're open to that, I'm down. But if not, right. if that's not right. your will, I'm okay. Right. You see what I'm saying? And I think that that is so key for us when we're, when we get to those moments of, because you talked about um, Abraham and you mm-hmm. said uh, that God said, I'm, I'm going to make your name great. And I really want to stop on the I'm going to. Come on. That's it. I'm, right. This mm-hmm. word right here, Philippians 2, 3 says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, which is not ours, our works, our desires, our right. goals, what we're doing. The word says that he's going to make us great, which means that anything that you're trying to attain on your own anyways, off of your own talents, your own gifts, your own ambitions is going to fail. It's never going to have the level of success that it would if you allowed him to do his job and you Come focus on. on yours, which is serving others. Right, right, right. The that word says it. He says, I will make your name great. Not Abraham, you will have the opportunity to make your name great. <laughs> Not Abraham in a couple right. of years, if you work really hard, you're going to make your name great. Mm-mm. It says, I will make your name great. And then he went on to give him specific directives. Right, 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 right. Right. And I think right. that that's, again, when we're talking about heart checks, are you allowing God to be God and you to be his creation and only to effectuate his glory in the earth? And then trusting that everything else is going to fall into place. Right. Right. Because you're talking, because you brought up like in the times that we're in, there has never been more access to influence than right now. Than right now. Oh my God. Right now. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then Mm -hmm. the question becomes, are you influencing others for Christ? Are you leading them to him or Mm -hmm. are you influencing them for yourself? Have you placed your value above their salvation? Mm, that's so good right there. <laughs> Cause you, you're right. So like right good. now I've, ne- I've never seen it. Like there is so much active. Anybody can be an influencer. Anybody can have a stage. Anybody, Anybody. can have followers, but right. where are you leading them? And how yeah. are you leading them? Yeah. Right. That is so good. That is so good. Yeah. That um, makes me think of Matthew 20 and 28. Um, it says, um, let's see, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many yeah just yeah I just wanted just to drop that little yeah just to drop that little nugget in there and so and so God put us on the earth Mm -hmm. for such a time as this yep so that we can be representatives of his kingdom to bring value to others, to advance the kingdom in the earth realm. And even as I'm reading this, because it says he didn't come to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom. Mm -hmm. So when I think about 
servant leadership as it relates to Jesus, it's about giving your life, your life. So that means that pride has to come down, selfishness has to come down, vain conceit, all of that. And it takes us back to the scripture in John 13, where it says that Jesus took off his His outer outer garment. Anything that will get in the way of me serving you, anything that will get in the way, I'm going to take it off. And it also goes back to the scripture where Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. When he began to wrestle with his will, Mm -hmm. He said, Father, if it be not your will, let his cup pass me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will. I will give my life to serve. And so there is a sacrificial offering as it relates to serving to. Yeah. It's about giving your life, giving your life, giving your life so that others can be saved so that others can be ransomed, so that they can be released from addiction, so that others can be delivered from strongholds. And so, yeah, 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 yeah. So serving is definitely about giving your life. And that's what Jesus did. And so, um, yeah, yeah. When you were talking, all of it, when you were talking, you used a word, you talked about outer garment, talked about getting rid of uh, some things, giving giving up your life, right? Like mm-hmm. sacrificing your life. And you talked about strongholds. And the first thing that I heard I said is that your life, your ambitions, your conceit, all those things have become a stronghold for you. Mm-hmm. And until you wow. release those, you won't oh gain the life that you're trying to protect. Yeah, that's so good. You mm-hmm. have Dang to enough. give up your perception of your life and what is owed to you to really gain the life that God has placed for you. Yeah. And so your ambitions, your perceptions, your conceit, your, your lack of humility, all of those things, your goals, whatever, those are now a stronghold. And so when you're talking about sacrificing your life, you're actually sacrificing the stronghold that you have built. Come on. And so you lose nothing. It is a blessing to you to sacrifice your life, to tear down that stronghold, to Mm -hmm. then erect the house on the solid foundation that God has called you to actually build. Right. That's good. That is so good. This is. That's so good. (laughs) You lose nothing, Drene. You lose nothing. You lose nothing. Come on. (laughs) I think that that's what scares us. Right. I think that that's a part of when we talk about true servant leadership, right. we think yeah. that we lose our impact. We think uh-huh. that we lose our influence. We think that we no longer have what it takes to be in the front. But the reality is that, again, the, res- the, the front is the result, right? right. But you right. are losing these false mentalities, right. these idols that you have created in your mind. Attitudes, right, 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 right. Because that's what it is, because you're now yeah. esteeming a lifestyle that God wasn't even talking to you about. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Because he said, it's I so will good. make you great. I will. He didn't tell you how he was going to do it. I will make you great. I will make your name great. I will Amen. do that. So your Amen. ambitions, your goals, those, those, the map that you have created, is not necessarily of him. The map that he's created is how have you served your brother or your sister? What have you done for them? Yeah, yeah. My God, thank you, Father. Mm, That's so sweet. Thank you. I mean, and to me, I I love it because it takes the responsibility off of our shoulders of creating something. Like that we we're not creators. I I just I I, I know that a lot of people aren't gonna like that. We're not, there's only one creator. Right, Right. The only one that gives life. And when it takes life away, right? Right. And so when we take that responsibility of off of our shoulders of playing many, many gods <laughs> and right. just focus on the task he's actually given us that he's equipped us to do, which yeah. is to serve and to give and to love, and then we love. no longer have this extra responsibility that really is what's causing us anxiety. Because a lot of the people that have depression and anxiety right now is because they're trying to create and live and do a life that God has not called them to. And they're trying to do it on their own. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. That is so powerful. 
that's that's over here but god's mm-hmm. path is like this it's in front of you it says keep your eyes straight ahead and don't look to the right or the left and your it. To look your deeds like it tells you go this way <laughs> that's it. but that's it that's it that is it um keeping our eyes on him making him the most important and not being just so self-important <laughs> but keeping our eyes on him, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so, yeah, yeah. God is good. God is good. God is right, right, right. I think that sometimes people think that they've, they've missed God or they haven't heard him or that God is silent all the time. But if you'll read his word. Right. If you'll read his word. He's always speaking. Yeah. He's always speaking. And he always is giving you the tips and the tools that you need to have an abundant life. And abundance looks differently than what we see on social media. (laughs) Totally different. Right. (laughs) It does. But again, that should help your anxiety, y'all. That should help your anxiety. Like you don't have to reach these goals. That stuff will be added unto you. That, that right there, if you'll do what he's called you to do, that stuff will be added. So you don't have to worry about it. But if you'll do what he says. Come on, in his word. In his, in word. his word. Yeah. He's very, very clear. Very clear. Then you're living in abundance. Yes. I'm excited. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. This is so I'm good. I'm so happy that you joined me today. I'm so glad to be on today. I am just so excited. <laughs> about I was this. like, guys, this is um, the week of the Hey Pretty Day Day. And I thought it was really important that Drene join us um, as we get prepared for this huge weekend. Um, I'm believing God um, for a supernatural shift of some yes. mindsets, a Woo. supernatural shift. Okay. Um, I, I met with them before all the speakers. I, I said, I, I don't, I don't really know what he's doing, but I'm trusting what he's doing. You know, and, it's, it's, you know there's people, you know, like uh-huh. this is, this is our opportunity to be servant leaders, to emulate Christ through our lives and everything that we're going to be teaching this weekend. So I'm excited um, that you guys are going to meet your name in person for those that are that purchased their tickets to the Hey Party Day Day. I'm excited for you to meet all the other speakers, but more importantly, more importantly, I'm excited for you to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 It's going to be a whole thing. But before we go, I want you to share how they can follow you and connect with you um, and also um, learn more about your services. Okay, perfect. So um, you all can follow me on Facebook at Drene Cobb and also on um, Instagram at Drene Cobb. Um, Also, my business is Renew Skin Bar here in Gainesville, Florida. Um, You can check me out on the website, www.renewskinbar.org. Check out all of my service, esthetician, um, microdermabrasion. All, all the of the stuff, all of the things. So um, check me out there. Um, and um, can they get your book yeah. on your website too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, actually, um, you can purchase my book on Amazon. Okay, it is on Amazon, Bar- um, Barnes and Nobles, Walmart, okay. all of those good sites. Prayer, developing a lifestyle of devotion. Yes. Yeah. Y'all go get it. Y'all go get it. If, if, if you noticed how much scripture she was sharing today and all the meat that she was sharing, go get her book. She really breaks down prayer um, and how it can change your life. And it's what we're called to do. She's just right. what she called it, building a lifestyle of devotion. And it's devotion to God. It's devotion oh. to God. So I'm so excited. I hope that you guys enjoyed our time today. I want you to hold Philippians 2 verses 3 through 4 in your hearts. And I want you to make sure that you're telling somebody to join you next week for pretty good coffee. Y'all, every Monday that we're joining together has been so impactful and so so much of a blessing to me just to sit with God and to share and with Drene and other guests. I don't want you to miss it. Make sure you're telling your girls to follow or subscribe to the channel um, and then share today's conversation. Share today's conversation with someone so they begin to change their mindset about what leadership actually looks like and they add the all-important word in front. 
servant. Okay. Servant. That's the thing. So I hope y'all make it a great week. Bye, pretty. Bye, pretty. Thank you.